Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, October the 17th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Bettingangle.us, free site. You know, you don't understand Mickey Mantle, right? You just don't. If you don't understand that he was a switch hitter, right? As dominant as the guy looks from one side of the plate, he was dominant from the other side of the plate, right? Likewise, you don't understand Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know the way old timers at the barbershop or at the pub always talk about Kareem Skyhook, right? As the most unstoppable shot in basketball history. Well, you don't understand the man until you understand that Kareem could shoot that sky hook with either hand, right? He's ambidextrous. You see these ball players today and they're struggling just to get the feet down. And you understand that Kareem got the angles and the feet down with both hands, right? Well, understand, you don't understand Terrence Crawford, the boxer, until you realize that the guy's ambidextrous. Now, one big myth, well, it's not even a myth. One big question was actually answered in this fight, his fight against Jose Benavides. It's one of the biggest questions in the sport. It's something I've been wondering for quite some time. And that question was whether or not Terrence Crawford is left or right handed. Let me just say, the fact that we have to ask the question shows you how great this fighter is. Right? You're watching several fights and you don't have a clue. Well, understand in this fight, folks, it's a jaw dropper. If you haven't seen it, you need to find a way to get it. You need to search the internet. The knockdown in the 12th round, with Crawford standing in a southpaw stance. In other words, his lead hand is his right hand. Think about it, his jab hand. The knockdown is a right uppercut. The hand he's jabbing with, that's the way he throws the uppercut. He just suddenly pivots and throws a beautiful looking uppercut. Benavides doesn't know what hit him. Hits the canvas. When he gets up, he's dead in the water. I believe that footage suggests that Terrence Crawford is actually right-handed, right? Just the leverage he gets, he throws the punch. You could tell it's his dominant hand. Now, if that's right, then Terrence Crawford just fought a guy in a non-dominant stance and completely demolished him, right, folks? Forget the highlights, let me just say this, right? And it's just like with Kareem, by the way. Crawford is fluid, right or lefty. His feet, his whole construct works together. You see him throwing a jab, it looks good right-handed, it looks good left-handed, right? This is a craftsman. Understand, the ambidexterity is something Floyd Mayweather didn't have, right? This is rare in boxing, right? Andre Ward was ambidextrous. He's retired. Tyson Fury's ambidextrous. And I'm not talking about a guy who can flash the other hand. I'm talking about guys who can literally fight you entire rounds, out of an off-handed stance. Well, let me just say, the dominance is so thorough. 
in this fight. Right? And keep in mind, both guys enter the ring unbeaten. Jose Benavides is a damn good fighter. Right? The reason I didn't make a pre-fight video is that Crawford was a huge favorite and I didn't see the profit in it. Right? Well, let me just say this. Crawford is so dominant that after the sixth round, right, think about it. And I know the guys have a lot of facial expressions and some vibes going on during the fight. But after the sixth round, there is not a single round in this fight, not a single one, where Benavides lands 10 punches, right? In other words, the Crawford you're seeing, and Crawford doesn't look to be moving that much. He's such a craftsman that by going southpaw against an orthodox fighter and by playing the angles and by being able to throw his dominant hand, a jab, uh, his right hand, in jab form effectively while moving just so much that Benavides has to reset, Crawford literally neutralizes Benavides' jab. How much so? In the eighth round, Benavides throws 25 jabs. Folks, he lands none of them. Three minute round, 25 jabs. Could not find Terrence Crawford once. Right? Now understand who Crawford is. In the amateurs, he beat Mikey Garcia. Folks, it's a wide fight. According to folklore, and it might be right, it's up to the boxing press to ask the fighters, right? I'm just a guy making videos, trying to find the time to make boxing videos. I wish I had the time to actually sit down and talk with fighters. If I ever got in a room with Mikey Garcia, in addition to talking with him about his unbeaten Hall of Fame career, right, multi-division champion, just like Terrence Crawford is, I would have to ask him whether the myth that he's the one who told top rank you need to sign Terrence Crawford is true, right? Think about it. Crawford beats a Hall of Fame fighter in the amateurs and according to mythology, it's that fighter who said to his promoter later when he gets a pro contract, you need to sign Terrence Crawford. <clears throat> Understand too, Terrence Crawford at one point beats Danny Garcia in the amateurs. Right? Well, this guy, let's just say he's now talking about wanting to fight Errol Spence. Is that fight even competitive? Spence is a fastball pitcher, right? Now, I, I love Errol Spence. I picked Errol Spence over the guy in the UK, right? Um, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name right now. But my point to you with Errol Spence is he's a size guy. He's a fastball pitcher, right? He's a guy who you know is going to come in mid-range to short-range hooker He's going to try to lean into some shots, land some hooks on your body. Will you deep in the pocket? Right? Would that work against a technician like this? A guy who goes around without getting hit by a jab. By the way, the preceding round, I believe Benavides throws 19 jabs. He lands one of them. Right? Crawford... Folks, when you watch a Crawford fight, you're watching an artist at work. A lot of Crawford's brilliance is in the planning. It's in realizing that a southpaw stance would neutralize Benavides if Crawford fights long. In other words, behind a jab, on the move. That's what he does, right? Other fights, you're gonna see Crawford right-handed with a completely different strategy. Put another way, 
He's really like the New England Patriots are in NFL football. Right? One week they're doing one thing. The next week they're doing another thing. The one thing you know is that they're winning more than everyone else. That's who Terrence Crawford is. Count me among those who believes that Crawford beats Errol Spence. I think Mikey Garcia beats Errol Spence. Right? Now that doesn't mean Crawford is unbeatable. I believe the kind of fighter who would give Crawford problems, right, is a home run hitter who is too fast for Crawford to get in his construct. In other words, Crawford strikes me as more of a Jerry Rice than a Randy Moss, right? I view Moss, in fact, Crawford strikes me as more of a LeBron James than a Michael Jordan, right? Crawford's a planner. Crawford is a technician. The technique and knowledge determines a lot of what he does. By contrast, I feel that a Moss, a Michael Jordan, a Mayweather when he was younger, these guys are quick twitch. They're athletes. Don't get me wrong, they're technicians too. But because Randy Moss has leaping ability that Jerry Rice doesn't have, Moss can do certain things, right? Because Jordan just has faster reflexes, prime Jordan. And I know young guys always debate me on it, debate me on it here in the comment section. But because Jordan moved faster, more suddenly, could change gears more quickly than LeBron James, Jordan simply put could do things on the court that LeBron James can't do. At least not as quickly and as fluidly as Michael Jordan did, right? Young Mayweather, Mayweather's always been a technician. He's always been a defensive wizard. But understand, young Mayweather, that left hook up front, the one he finishes Diego Corrales with, right? That's a hair trigger left hook. I don't feel that Crawford has that kind of sudden hair trigger type punch, right? Make no mistake, Crawford technique wise is more advanced than Floyd Mayweather, right? Mayweather needed a certain pace, a certain distance. Against fighters like Emmanuel Augustus, you could tell uh, Mayweather got out of gear a bit, right? I believe Crawford is a guy who can vary the pace of a fight. Crawford can handle shootouts. He can handle throwdowns. Right? He gets stunned in the Yorkies Gamboa fight, but then returns fire, doesn't try to slow down the fight. He's not clutching and grabbing. He's the one upping the pace against Victor Postal. Right? In many ways, this guy is like LeBron. You can tell he's thinking everything through. You can tell, like LeBron, he's ambidextrous. Right, If LeBron has you on his shoulder blades and he has the ball, you don't know if he's going right or left. Right, folks? Just understand, this guy is dominant. So I believe Manny Pacquiao who's sudden, who's quick twitch, who doesn't give you an opportunity to plan and to be ready when you're in your offhand. I think a Manny Pacquiao, and he's still active, would give Terrence Crawford a tougher fight than would Errol Spence. Let me go one step further. 
in history. I believe a Ray Leonard, blinding hand speed, combination puncher, heavy puncher, look at the KO percentage. I believe a Ray Leonard, who I feel has heavier hands than Terrence Crawford, who's a little bit more of a daredevil than Terrence Crawford. I believe a Ray Leonard would give Crawford problems because, again, Crawford's a guy who, when he has time to think, can set things up, can make them work. Jerry Rice on a, you know, a DB, right? Who Jerry can lean on, get the edge on, know how to work his body. Michael Irvin, another great receiver. Chris Carter, another great receiver, but none of them burners, right? But when Jerry Rice went up against Deion Sanders, cerebral, but better athlete across the board. Jerry had some problems, right? In my opinion, that's the kind of guy who would give Crawford problems. Let me name another guy who I think gives Crawford problems. Sean Porter. Simply because Porter is sudden. In other words, you give, you give Crawford time to think. And Crawford's able to shut you out when you throw 25 jabs at him in a round. You give Crawford time to think. And Crawford's able to say, okay, I'm going to go southpaw here. But if the opening presents itself, I'm going to throw an uppercut with my lead hand. Folks, he hardly threw any uppercuts in the fight. He had it ready in that 12th round, didn't he? Right? Let me also say, too, it's a bit of a shame that they don't have a term in boxing for switch hitters. Right? In baseball, they tell you, Eddie Murray's a switch hitter. And you think to yourself, oh, 500 home runs and he's doing it from both sides of the plate? Right? You have an appreciation. Guy like Tim Raines, leadoff hitter. They say switch hitter, you understand, wow, the other manager can't even throw out a left-hander against him to slow him down, or righty, because this guy's going to switch. Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, you understand, switch hitter, right? Doesn't matter who's pitching, Charlie Hustle is going to be a menace. He's going to be giving different, different looks, right? In boxing, we don't have the term because it's so rare. So when fight fans are looking at a fight, Tyson Fury, Kevin Johnson, and Tyson Fury's winning the fight, dominating the fight, and people are saying, oh, Fury's not really doing as well as I thought. Even though Fury's fighting the fight left-handed, folks just don't quite get it. Keep in mind, what I'm talking about is different than a righty, Marvin Hagler, fighting out of a southpaw stance. Than a guy like De La Hoya, a lefty, fighting out of an orthodox stance, living off of a lead 45, right? That lead punch was actually De La Hoya's dominant hand. Now I'm talking about something completely different. I'm talking about the ability to move around the ring with your right shoulder as a lead and then to move around the ring coordinated with your left shoulder as a lead and having all the punches, right? Having it all together. Mickey Mantle one year, believe it or not, won the Triple Crown with numbers good enough to have won the Triple Crown in either league, right? Crazy. And he was a switch hitter, right? That's what we're dealing with here with Terrence Crawford. Understand, at 140, Crawford wasn't the unified champion. Crawford was the undisputed champion. One guy, all the sanctioning bodies, even in this fragmented world. Now he's at 147. Compare and contrast the Manny Pacquiao Jeff Horn fight with the Crawford Jeff Horn fight. 
right? Well, Crawford has the chance to beat some big names, right? I believe Crawford is so gifted. I don't know why Crawford would stop at 147. I think Crawford right now can take out some of the champs at 154, right? So don't sleep on this guy. Just understand as you're watching him against Benavides, he's not even standing... He's, he's not even standing in the stance of his dominant hand. This guy's on the other side of the plate. He's a righty fighting as a southpaw. And his defense is so dominant that his unbeaten opponent cannot land 10 punches in a round in the second half of the fight. Truly dominant performance. Yes, I would take Crawford over Errol Spence. I don't mean to diss Errol Spence. I know it seems like I'm taking everyone over Spence. Right? The guy Spence beat in the UK, Kel Brook, who I took Spence over, right? Understand, I have a lot of respect for Spence. A lot of respect. But I feel that Mikey Garcia, who I take over Spence, and I feel that Terrence Crawford, who I take over Spence, are all-time greats, right? Unbeaten fighters with multiple titles. Think about that, right? Dominance in multiple weight classes. And I feel that Spence is a fastball pitcher where if you're an elite fighter, you can figure out how to hit that fastball. And then the question becomes, can Spence actually defend himself against you? And I just feel that Terrence Crawford just offers too many angles for him to do so. I do, though, have to add that I would take Manny Pacquiao over Crawford. I believe even at his older age, Manny Pacquiao is faster hand speed wise than Terrence Crawford. I agree. Pacquiao relies heavily on a straight left. I agree that Crawford is a technician who would be prepared for it, just like Jerry Rice was prepared for a DB. Just like LeBron James knows how he's going to play against the Golden State Warriors before the game tips off. Crawford would be prepared for it. But Manny's a guy who has great legs. Manny would be able to jump around the ring Right, And this version of Manny Pacquiao is actually proficient, right? much more so than when he fought El Terrible years ago, with that short right hook. Right, I just think Manny is the better athlete than Terrence Crawford. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. In sum... If Crawford is fighting a predictable fighter who's a fastball pitcher, who doesn't have great legs, who he knows where the guy is going to be, the guy gives him time to think, I think Crawford's awfully dangerous. I think this guy could take this all the way up to 160. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.